Good afternoon, everyone. I am Tal Heinrich, a spokesperson for the Israeli Prime Minister's Office. This is day 77 of the October 7th war. Let us begin with some of our latest figures. We continue to mourn the loss of over 1,200 Israeli citizens who were murdered on Hamas's October 7th killing spree. Our thoughts are with the victims' families. This morning, the IDF announced the deaths of two more soldiers, thus bringing the IDF's death toll to 471. The fallen soldiers are 21-year-old Lieutenant Shai Ayeli from Ashkelon and 31-year-old Sergeant First Class Tal Shua from Beersheba. Our thoughts are with Shai and Tal's families, and we mourn their tragedies with heavy hearts. Our hostage count has not changed since yesterday as we continue to pursue the release of 129 men, women and children who were abducted and currently remain in the hands of terrorists in Gaza. The Red Cross continues to shirk responsibility for taking care of our hostages and we again demand that they do their job and visit our hostages to provide them with vital medical care. And now for an operational update. In Khan Yunus, the IDF's 214th Artillery Brigade and the Commando Brigade are using guided weapons such as the Iron Sting and other precision missiles in their operations. So far, they have struck hundreds of terror targets with those accurate, precise weapons. In southern Gaza City, IDF troops located numerous weapons, shells and explosive devices in a residence adjacent to a kindergarten. In a haunting discovery this morning in Bet Hanun, the IDF uncovered a set of Hamas uniforms meant for children. This is yet another reminder of Hamas's absolute evil as a group who brainwashes their youth to hate Jews, glorify martyrs, and dream about obliterating the Jewish state. They lie to their own children, insisting that peace is impossible while Jews live in Israel. Where is UNICEF? Why is there, is there so little concern about the Hamas terror group robbing children of their future? On the northern front, the IDF continues to launch targeted responses to Hezbollah's unyielding aggression. We condemn the blatant disregard for UN Resolution 1701, which guaranteed Hezbollah would be dis disarmed in southern Lebanon. And we express our outrage at countries who remain silent and refuse to condemn Hezbollah's repeated escalations. We also highlight the UN's one-sidedness when it comes to Israel's conflict with Hezbollah. Just yesterday, the UN tweeted about 60,000 displaced Lebanese civilians without ever mentioning the more than 80,000 Israeli civilians who have been displaced for over two months now. The double standard is clear. The UN's impartiality is a myth. We are well aware of the upcoming UN Security Council vote regarding our war against Hamas terrorists. We remind the international community that Hamas dragged us into this war and they have explicitly threatened to commit more and more massacres on the same scale and with the same brutality as October 7th. To those calls for genocide, we say never again. We are acting with the dignity of a government which is determined to care for its own people. The same cannot be said of Hamas, who use their entire population as a massive human shield. Any country which is concerned about the welfare of Palestinians and Israelis must insist on Hamas's complete surrender and unconditional release of hostages. Only then can we hope to see a lasting peace. I'm now glad to take your questions. Please. comes from Reuters. Uh, it is a series of questions and I will ask them all together. Mm -hmm. When will the humanitarian corridor between Cyprus and Gaza be active? Which countries and shipping companies will transport the aid to Gaza? How and where will it be landed on the Gaza coast? And Israel has kept Gaza under naval blockade since 2007 and is legally required to exclude any and all ships from Gaza waters. How then can aid ships be admitted as part of this corridor? 
Well, Israel is already going above and beyond. We're really taking unprecedented um, steps here to ease the civilian suffering in Gaza from the very outset on, of this war. We said that there's no limit on uh, food and water supplies entering the Gaza Strip. And we continue to examine uh, difficult, di di different ways, rather, um, to continue uh, the, the passage, the free passage of, of uh, uh, food and water into Gaza. We don't want to see the Palestinian civilians suffering for uh, the war that Hamas has dragged us into. And um, once we have new official announcements to make, well, we, we, we will make sure that you're aware and we will announce it in that respect. Next question. The next question comes from Jim Williams of Zenger International News Service in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Tal, while the U.N. has been critical of the amount of humanitarian aid going to Gaza from Israel, Yesterday, President Herzog said three times as much aid could go to Gaza if the UN would dedicate more help to distribute the aid. My question is, the, my question is the UN doing enough to get aid to Gaza, or are they covering up for their own lack of ability to allow Israel to provide the aid to the people in Gaza? You see, we have said that we have excess capacity to inspect the trucks getting into the Gaza Strip. And we're talking about hundreds of trucks. We have two inspection points. We have Kerem Shalom and Mitzana, which are two border crossings um, between Israel and the Gaza Strip. Um, and we have uh, the Rafah border crossing and Kerem Shalom, from which the aid is actually getting inside the Gaza Strip. Now, uh, we, we have to ask, why is the aid not being distributed appropriately, right? Why are Hamas stealing some of the, the aid that is meant for the civilian population in Gaza? And in that respect, I think it's important to mention that it's outrageous that UN agencies and some aid groups have not condemned this method, that Hamas not even acknowledge it. We, the IDF, are, are releasing these videos for the world to see. It is very clear that Hamas is stealing some of this aid. So um, I'll repeat again, we are able to inspect more trucks than what is getting inside the Gaza Strip. International um, organizations, aid agencies, they should keep up with our pace, not the other way around. The next question is from Lauren Izzo of CNN. Mm -hmm. Can you give any insight into Israel's knowledge of Sinwar's current whereabouts and how close the IDF could be to closing in on him? So, uh, Lauren from CNN, we are not commenting on operational military activity happening right now on the ground or anything that has to do with military strategy moving ahead. Um, but what I can say is that Yihya Sinwar, the leader of Hamas, has signed his own death sentence on October 7th, and we will administer justice. The next question is from Melanie Lidman of the Associated Press. Can you please comment on reports that IDF have destroyed ambulances from the Palestinian Red Crescent in Jabalia? And can you comment on the New York Times investigation that Israel has dropped at least 2,000 pound bunker buster bombs on Gaza? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we will have to refer these questions to the IDF. I haven't seen these two reports. Um, these are a question for the IDF spokesperson. That's it. All right. So these are all the questions that we have uh, for today. That concludes our daily briefing. Thank you for being with us. The Jobnet.